friends so myself b harish associate professor in department of mechanical engineering maharaj institute of technology mysore so today i am here to give the introduction about the subject called as computer aided engineering drawing so which is for the new scheme that is 22 23 batch under the nep scheme so the subject title it goes like this computer aided engineering drawing with the subject code as 22 CAD 13 bar 23. So here, uh, in this session, I will be giving the brief introduction about the overview of the subject, and then the next part will be about the COs, the textbooks, and how the marks division is carried out. So coming to the subject overview, so it has got five different models. The first model will be about the introduction. So in the introduction uh, model, so we'll be discussing about starting with what is engineering drawing, importance of engineering drawing, then conventions that is BIS conventions. Then, uh, if you want to draw a drawing, so you should have planes. So we'll be discussing about the three different planes: horizontal plane, vertical plane, and profile plane. Similarly, when you want to draw a, a drawing of an object. So you should have uh, the planes, as I just now mentioned, the three planes, and so depending upon uh, how the object is viewed, so we can have three different views. That is, front view, top view, profile view. So we'll be discussing about the three views. That is, what is front view? How to draw the front view? What is top view? How to draw the top view? Similarly, what is profile view? How to draw the profile view? So, if you want to draw the views, you should have three planes. So, regarding that, three planes we'll be discussing. That is vertical plane, horizontal plane, and profile plane. Next, in the same introduction model, so we'll be discussing about the quadrants. So, a drawing can be drawn of any object, placing it in four different quadrants. So, what is the quadrant we'll be discussing? So, we can have four different quadrants: first quadrant, second quadrant. Third quadrant and fourth quadrant. So, how will be the uh, position in case of first quadrant? Similarly, second quadrant, third quadrant, and fourth quadrant. So, these things uh, will once again come under the introduction part. So, after this, you will be discussing about the conventions, how to represent the top view, how to represent the front view, how to represent the profile view. So representation, representation of the views. Then, at the end of this first part, that is introduction model. So we'll be studying about what is projection. So what is projection? How to draw the projection? So how to draw the projection given an object? So actually, the first model is divided into two sections. That is, the first one is the introduction part. Second one is the projection. So once you know about the projection. So we'll be discussing about the projection of a point. So projection of a point. So what is point? How to draw the projection of a point? Placing in the quadrants. So as I just now told, so we can have three, four different quadrants. So first, second, third, and fourth. So in the new scheme, that is uh, 22nd, uh, 20, uh, 22 scheme. So Uh, the syllabus is framed that so drawing the projections placing in first and third quadrants so what is third quadrant what is for, uh, uh, first quadrant will be known so how to draw the projection when you place a point in the first and third quadrant next in the same model so you will be discussing about the projection of lines and planes so here what is orthographic projection also will be discussed so what is projection what is orthographic projection projection of points then come to the projection of lines so here projection of lines so the line uh, will be placed in the first quadrant only and based on placing the line in first quadrant in different positions how to draw the projection how to draw the projection that is projection of lines and in the third part of the same model we will be draw, uh, discussing about the projection of planes under this you will be first discussing what is a plane what is a plane then 
what are different planes we come across so namely triangle rectangle square hexagon and pentagon so how to draw hexagon how to draw a pentagon similarly square triangle and the last one is circle so all these different type of planes placing in a different uh, that is the first quadrant how to draw the projections how to draw the projections so that is the second part in the introduction part we will be also discussing about the uh, software so here uh, the projections should be drawn on a sheet and the same thing has to be uh, worked on the system hence regarding the system we will be discussing uh, we will be discussing about the uh, software uh, commands simple commands so like line how to draw a line then how to draw the planes then uh, your uh, uh, software uh, commands like moving copy uh, extending so some of the basic uh, commands which we use to draw the projection of point line and planes so these things will be uh, discussed in the first module that is about the introduction so then moving to the second module that is orthographic projection of solids so here first we will be discussing what is solid what is solid so how solids are classified so how solids are classified so what is the basic definition of solid how solids are classified and we will be discussing about what is a prism what is a pyramid so what is a prism and what is a pyramid then under prism so we will be discussing about different types of prisms like triangular prism square prism rectangle prism pentagon prism and then the hexagonal prism so all these types of prisms so placing in first quadrant with this base edge on x uh, xy plane how to draw the projections so how to draw the uh, first set of top and front view second set top of uh, top and front view and third set of top and front view next on the projection of solids only we will be discussing about the pyramid the second type of solid what is a pyramid so basic uh, elements of a pyramid under pyramid once again uh, square pyramid rectangular pyramid pentagon hexagon pyramid then the third type of solid will be about the cone so what is a cone how to draw the projections of a cone then uh, we will be discussing the other type of solids like hexahedron that is nothing but cube and tetrahedron so what is tetrahedron what is the difference between tetrahedron and a triangular prism what is hexahedron so hexahedron is nothing but a cube what is cube so how to draw the projections of a cube so in total we will be discussing about the prisms types of prisms then pyramid types of pyramid then a uh, cone then cube and then uh, that is your uh, tetrahedron so tetrahedron so placing the solid and how to draw the toroids projections so that is what we discuss in the second model that is orthographic projection of solids so here orthographic is nothing but 90 degree so placing in 90 degree how to draw the projections then third model will uh, speak about this isometric projection so here in this model we'll be discussing about what is isometric scale what is isometric view and what is isometric projection so what is isometric scale what is isometric projection and what is isometric view then how to draw the isometric view of different solids how to draw the isometric view of different solids so that uh, uh, things will be discussed in the third model that is about isometric projections then the fourth model we will be speaking about development of lateral surfaces of solids so here uh, we we'll start with the discussion about what is development importance of development so types of development so basically there are two types of developments parallel line development and radial line development so what is parallel line development how to draw development of a solid using this parallel line development technique similarly what is radial line development how to draw the development of solids using this particular method that is radial line development so basically parallel line development is used for drawing development of the prisms and cylinders so it is used for drawing the uh, development of prisms and cylinders similarly radial line development which will be used for drawing the development of your pyramid and cone 
So two types of solids under one category that is parallel lane development, two types of remaining solids that is under radial lane development. So also here under the same development we will be uh, discussing about the development of combination of uh, solids. So combination of solids, so where you will be having more than one solid, how to draw the development of that particular solids like funnel, uh, then uh, one more thing is that is based on the applications. So how to draw the development of combination of solids. That is what we will be discussing in the fourth model that is development of lateral surfaces. Then the fifth model is multidisciplinary applications and practices. So this is only for the continuous evaluation scheme that is so that is only for internal exam that is internals. So this particular model multidisciplinary applications and practices. So here uh, application problems we will be discussing with respect to where uh, engineering drawing concept is used in uh, electrical field, civil engineering field, mechanical field, electronic field like that. So where are the applications that are used? So multidisciplinary, the name itself tells that multidisciplinary applications. Application of this engineering drawing concept in uh, different fields, so electronic field, mechanical field, civil, electrical field, etc. like that. So this is uh, fifth model is only for the uh, regular internals that is continuous evaluation what is done uh, as part of the that is uh, semester scheme. So these are the five different models. So that comes under the uh, subject called computer engineering drawing. Next uh, coming to the COs. So course outcome. CO is nothing but course outcome. So once you study this particular subject, so what is the outcome of this particular subject? So here uh, there are, we have identified five different COs. The first CO, it says that understand the conventions and concepts on systems and of dimensions, orthographic projection, isometric projection and development of surfaces. That is understanding the basic conventions, understanding the basic conventions and concepts on systems. So on, uh, concepts on systems of uh, dimensioning. So basically how to draw the uh, that is uh, using convention method how to draw orthographic projection, isometric projection, development. Similarly how to solve it on a system that is system. So understand the conventions and concept of systems of dimensioning. So how to dimensioning, uh, dimension a particular that is drawing. That is about the first CO. Then coming to the second CO, it says that apply the concept of orthographic projections isometric projections and development of surfaces to solve drafting problems. So apply the concept, so applying the concept, whatever basic concept that has been discussed, applying those concepts for drawing projections, that is orthographic projection, then isometric projection, then development and to solve drafting problems. How to, for solving a problem, how the concept, basic concept is applied. So that speaks about the second CO. Then third CO, it says that analyze graphical representation of engineering drawing. Analyzing, analyzing the drawing. So once the drawing is done, uh, how to analyze? So the, and represent, analyze graphical representation of engineering drawing. How to represent the engineering drawing? How to represent an engineering drawing? So that speaks about the third CO. Then for CO, it speaks about that identify the interdisciplinary engineering components or systems through its graphical representation. So this CO speaks about the fifth model, multidisciplinary applications and practices. That is the fifth model. So this uh, particular CO identify the interdisciplinary engineering components or systems through its graphical representation. So uh, the CO is related with the fifth model. So how to identify the uh, interdisciplinary engineering uh, components or systems through its graphical representation, how it can be represented graphically. That is about the fourth CO. Then coming to the fifth CO, it says that learn effective utilization of drafting software tools and develop engineering drawings using drafting software. So as I just now mentioned, so here you will be drawing the drawing on the sheet or a book and the same drawings will be solved on the system using the software. 
So relating that, so solving problems on the system, so this he was speaks about that, that he says that effective utilization of drafting software tools using different software tools and develop engineering drawing using drafting software. So using that tools, you will be developing the engineering drawings using the software. So that CO related with the uh, solving the problem on a system. So these are the few uh, five CO's that has been identified with the with respect to subject computer aided engine drawing subject code 22 CAD 13 bar 23. Next thing is that here, so here uh, the CIE marks and SWE marks and what is the total marks for this particular subject. So that is uh, continuous evaluation scheme. So that is for internals. So 50 marks it has been allotted. Similarly, SWE that is semester end exams. So it is 50 marks. So total marks. So for this subject that is for 100 marks. 50 marks for CIE and 50 marks for SWE. That is CIE is continuous evaluation scheme evaluation. Whereas SWE is system uh, semester end exams. Next. Coming to the books that can be uh, referred or that is prescribed by the university. The first textbook is K.R. Gopal Krishna and Sudhir Gopal Krishna. So the title of the book is that textbook of computer aided engineering drawing. Textbook of computer aided engineering drawing. So K.R. Gopal Krishna and Sudhir Gopal Krishna. That is the first book that is prescribed by the university. Then the second book speaks about the one more author that is N.D. But so ND but so title is engineering drawing plane and solid geometry so second book is uh, ND but the author is ND but title of the uh, book is engineering drawing plane and solid geometry so this is about the introduction so the what is the uh, subject overview the COs uh, that is about this particular subject so marks distribution and the textbooks uh, that has been prescribed by the university So uh, in the previous uh, session, uh, we saw uh, the syllabus and the scheme of examination and the examination question paper pattern. Now let us uh, go into our syllabus, module 1. Module 1 uh, is introduction to drawing. It is the simplest uh, module where we will be understanding what are the types of drawings and how the drawings, uh, notation, symbols, representation has to be done. So what is this drawing? Drawing uh, is uh, defined as the art of representing, uh, uh, art of representing an object with a systematic lines uh, on a paper on a paper is called drawing it is an art of representing uh, an object uh, with a systematic lines Every, right it is with the use of a systematic lines an artist will also use the lines but the systematic way he uses is different the way the engineer uses those lines is different uh, so where artist is worried only about the size and shape of the object whereas an engineer is worried about dimensions annotations standards and many other things materials and so on so uh, the drawing uh, is uh, defined uh, basically as the art of representing an object by systematic lines on a paper so the drawing is basically classified into two category artistic drawing and an engineering drawing I think by now you will be understanding what is an artistic drawing the drawing an artist draws to, to give the shape of the object to just come up with the shape of the object is called as an artistic drawing what is an engineering drawing then an engineering drawing is the one where an engineer worries about dimensions standards annotations representations materials and so on so that he can communicate with other persons effectively uh, so so that he, the other person can fabricate the member material fabricate the component or you can build the building so the engineering drawing is different than that of an artistic drawing so you know, what are the engineering drawings that we can see we can know says this is the first uh, uh, basic course in our uh, engineering and uh, here uh, we will be understanding the basic concepts of our, our engineering life in drawing uh, domain so the engineers, those who, those engineers who use the drawing skills to come up with a building layout are and uh, some of these uh, building drawings and so on. So we call those drawings as civil engineering drawings. The drawings that are done by civil engineers are said to be as a civil engineering drawings. 
yes of course mechanical engineering has got huge scope in drawing and uh, it is uh, very important in mechanical engineering because a mechanical engineer which has to draw the drawings of any machine component uh, any uh, machines any mechanisms all those mechanisms the basic uh, foundation for a machine will start from the basic block will start from drawings he should come up with a conceptual drawing then he goes with detailed drawing then he goes with uh, modeling then he gives simulation and so on so uh, the drawings that are done by mechanical engineers are called as machine drawings or mechanical drawings even electrical uh, electrical engineers will use the the drawings knowledge the drawings which are used to build a circuit diagram the uh, the circuit diagram of any um, machine component or any machine or any transformer all those drawings which are run by electrical engineers are called as electrical drawings so name any field of engineering where it uses the drawings with all the annotations and symbols and the dimensions those drawings which are drawn by its engineers we group them under something called as engineering drawing so these are the two basic categories of engineering drawing so to start with our engineering drawing so as i said there is a huge difference between artistic and an engineering drawing we are now should focus only on engineering drawing as we have joined in engineering engineering course so in engineering so we will have some uh, important things like we should start we will start with the basic drawing that we have is projection of points then we climb the ladder to move on to projection of lines then we still climb up to know understand the projection of planes solids isometric then development of lateral surfaces to understand all these uh, basic things we will should understand something called as planes and the pro projection planes projection of planes so to understand the concept of projection of planes i have represented something in the pictorial way so in space in space or in the world any object you take everything is three dimensional everything is three dimensional we reduce them into two dimensional one dimensional and zero dimensional based on our convenience so once i say everything is three dimensional so here i have represented something i have written some diagram so that the object can be represented in 3d space the object can be represented in 3d space so how to represent them uh, there are certain standards there are certain standards to represent uh, all those things so the basic standard that we start with our engineering uh, drawing is the projection planes or the planes of projection the planes of projection these are the planes on which we are going to throw the uh, image of the object as in the movie theaters the film is projected on to the white screen the white screen is acting as one of the plane one of the plane so that plane is given with certain name so what is the name of that plane and uh, all those things we will start from this plane of projection i think you everyone can see the i project plane of projection 3d space plane of projection it has got something called as vp something called as hp so what are this vp and hp something some plane or some surface that is kept horizontal some surface that is kept horizontal or parallel to the floor or parallel to the ground we call that as an horizontal plane if you just observe the diagram the entire plane is said to be an horizontal plane a plane or a surface which is vertical which is vertical which is placed parallel to the wall parallel to the wall we call that particular plane as a vertical plane we call that plane as a vertical plane you can observe we have one horizontal plane and one vertical plane both intersect at one particular point both are intersecting at one particular point or a line you can just observe over here this line where vertical plane and horizontal plane are intersecting with each other we call this as a junction point or we generally represent in our engineering language as an xy line we call, represent that as an xy line so you might have understood you might have seen in your uh, basics of mathematics where we have uh, four quadrants uh, four quadrants for example uh, for first quadrant both x and y are positive in the second quadrant x is negative whereas y is positive in third quadrant the both x and y are negative in fourth quadrant x is positive y is negative we we observed something there 
first quadrant and third quadrant are exactly opposite to each other. In first quadrant, both x and y are positive. In the third quadrant, both x and y are negative. That means they are opposite to each other or they are crossed with each other. Same thing happens in case of second and fourth quadrant. What happens in second and fourth quadrant? X is negative, y is positive. X is negative, y is positive. What happens in the fourth quadrant? X is positive, y is negative. This is in our mathematics. This is in our mathematics. Same similar thing happens in our graphics also. You can observe, I have represented something called as first second third and fourth these are called as quadrants first quadrant second quadrant third quadrant and fourth quadrant in our projection we have very important thing starting called as angle of projection angle of projection we have four angles of projection first angle projection second angle projection third angle projection and fourth angle projection what is the first angle projection the first angle projection as well as the quadrants are related to each other so let us understand one by one let us start with our first quadrant our first angle projection in first angle projection what happens is the object if you consider myself as an object and uh, the board as the plane board as the plane and you audience as an observer you are the observer for me right now so observer object and the plane so here in the first angle projection the object comes in between the observer and the plane of projection in first angle projection it is said that the object is between the observer and the plane of projection so you are seeing you are uh, the audience you people the you audience are seeing my front view you are seeing my front portion of my body so this view where you are seeing my seeing me is called as the front view you are able to see my front portion of the body the view that can be said to that view uh, portion is said to be a front view front view so in uh, first angle projection this could this is the definition of first angle projection in first angle projection the object is between the observer and the plane of projection the object is between the observer and the plane of projection plane of projection here i just uh, taken a portion from the 3d space and i have represented the first quadrant here so where we are observing vertical plane and an horizontal plane vertical and an horizontal plane you are the observer you you, you are the observer here you are able to see vertical plane as directly you are able to see the wall if the object is not present you are able to see the wall if the object is present you will see the object first then you are able to see the plane so once you are come across the object you will start projecting the object onto the plane that is next to the object the plane that is next to the object is the board so object is between you the observer as well as the plane of projection this condition we call we come across in first quadrant or in first angle projection see in first angle projection in whatever the position the observer is but the co concept remains the same now let us start let us think in the other way you you are the observer this is my front portion i will just turn myself to the side so now this is my side view this is my side view so you are the observer my side view is here and the plane is present so again observe um, think that observe that object is coming between the observer and the plane of projection now come to the top the observer is here and object is here so you will be projecting my head onto the ground again observer object and the ground so object will come in between the observer and the plane of projection in case of which quadrant first quadrant in case of first quadrant in first quadrant the object will always be in between the observer and the plane of projection this is the condition in case of first quadrant or in first angle projection now let us move on to the second quadrant in second quadrant what happens in second quadrant the observer is there only the observer is here itself but the object has moved behind the plane that means to say we have a plane over here we have a plane just imagine i said a bit of imagination is required in our graphics class so we have a plane and i am standing after that plane 
or behind that plane. So, who is coming in between you as well as the object? The plane of projection is coming between you as well as observer as well as the object. This condition where the plane of projection is between the observer and the object, this condition we call it as second quadrant condition or second angle projection. See, I have taken a cut portion of the 3D space of plane of projection. Observer is here. Object is behind the vertical plane, behind the plane. So, you are here, plane comes the next, then comes the object. So, plane is between the observer and the object. Whereas in first quadrant, observer, object, then comes the plane. So, object is between the observer and the plane of projection. Whereas in second, object is behind the plane of projection. Whereas between the observer and the object, we have a plane of projection. Now let us move on to third quadrant or a third angle projection. Third angle projection. In third angle projection, many things are going to change. Like the object is behind the plane and it is below one more plane that you just observe here. This is the vertical plane we had. This is an horizontal plane. Now the object is here. Object is here. Object is behind the vertical plane and below the horizontal plane. It is just below the horizontal plane. This is completely reverse to that of the first quadrant. Whereas in first quadrant, what was the option? The object was above the horizontal plane and the object was in front of the vertical plane. Whereas in third quadrant, it will be below the horizontal plane and behind the vertical plane. This is the case of third quadrant or third angle projection. Let us move on further for the fourth quadrant where the object is below the horizontal plane but it is in front of the vertical plane in front of the vertical plane again we hear the object is between the observer and the plane of projection but it is below the horizontal plane these are the four quadrants that we come across in case of projection of in case of projection in plane projection plane of projection so all these things, all the four quadrants are very important and they are uh, very essential for understanding the base, understanding the concepts of engineering graphics. Without understanding the concept of first quadrant, second quadrant, third and fourth, we cannot proceed further. We cannot proceed further. So it is very, very essential to understand the concept of first, second, third as well as fourth. In the next session, we will uh, understand, we will take only the first quadrant and we will understand what are the conditions that are, what are the conditions that is possible in case of first quadrant and what are the conditions that is possible in second quadrant, third as well as fourth in, uh, by taking uh, one by one piece by piece we will understand and we will solve few of the problems to for better understanding of uh, the planes of projection. So let us meet in the next session.